Hey, my name is April, and this is Silver. <laughs> and today I'd like to talk about the cure for my compulsion to control. Last week I shared about how we can develop this feeling that we have to try to control everything and how toxic it can be. This week I want to talk about how to be set free from that. When I try to be in charge of things that are not actually in my control, it's very stressful. So I'll notice that I'm going to be afraid, anxious, lonely, um, frustrated, resentful, because I am trying to control things that don't belong to me, and that is a recipe for a disaster for me emotionally and spiritually. And it's an, a recipe for a disaster for my relationships with God and with people, too. I really believed in the past that it was my responsibility to make everything work out, right? That I needed to make people do what they were supposed to do and make situations work out the way they were supposed to in my mind. The cure for my compulsion to control is very simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is simple. And that is, I need to have proper thinking about myself, other people, and God. In my old way of looking at things, subconsciously, I saw myself as very big and God as small and other people as small and that as if they were all in the sphere of my control and it was up to me to make everything work out right. Like it was really my responsibility to make sure God and other people did what they were supposed to. I would never have articulated it like that, like I'm so big and powerful and other people and God are so small and wimpy, but that if you looked at how I lived and the fruit of my life, that was what I believed. It was a skewed belief, a fixed belief that was built on a lie and a lot of pride. Reality is God is huge, much bigger than the universe. And reality is I am very small. When you compare me to the galaxies and the solar system and the planet and even my country or my state, I am very small and I don't have much control over much of anything. Reality is Psalm 8, 3-4, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? When I understand who God is and the place of people in the universe, including myself, then I can begin to properly relate to God, other people, and myself. The truth is that God alone is God. I am not God, not even close. God sent Jesus, his son, to be the only savior people need. I am not a savior, not for myself, not for my parents, not for my siblings or my husband or anybody else. God's spirit is the only one who can open blind eyes and convict people of sin. That is not my job. I am not the Holy Spirit and I am not deity. And so I need to understand those things are not in my sphere of influence. God sits on the throne in the highest heavens and every knee will bow to him alone, not to me, not to any other person, not to Satan, not to anyone but God himself. God has put all authority under Jesus' feet after he was raised from the dead. Angels bow to God, even the demons believe and tremble, and they bow to Jesus too. God alone is worthy of worship. I am not. God reigns over the universe. I do not, just in case I'm confused about that. Like I need to get these things straight and not, not that I would ever say these things out loud, but what I believe in my heart, I need to make sure is built on the right foundation. God has all power and wisdom and I do not. God loves me and all people very dearly because he is love. I have value because God loves me and I am created in his image just like every other person does. 
My purpose, according to God and His Word, is to love and obey God, to bring Him glory, to choose to use my free will to voluntarily and willingly love God, follow Him, obey Him, and please Him, and then to love others with His love pouring through me. Now, I can influence God, people, and circumstances to a degree, for bad or for good, but I can only control myself, my attitudes, my motives, my sin, my response to others, my words, my actions. And even then, I can only control myself in a healthy way with the power of the Holy Spirit. So just to recap, my responsibilities are to, number one, control myself with God's Spirit's power. Number two, to love, obey, and worship God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, which brings glory to Him. And number three, to love others with God's love. Those things are my responsibilities. I can be set free from my illusion of control, and that is what it is, an illusion. God's truth truly does set me free. I can repent from my pride, my huge pride, thinking I was so big and important, and humbly receive God's truth. And then there is freedom in that. Then I seek only to control the things that are truly mine, and I trust God with circumstances and other people because those things are not under my control. They're under God's sovereignty. They're under the control of other people's free will, but they are not in my control. And when I understand what is mine to control versus what is not mine to control, that helps me to have peace. Within God's sovereignty is his permissive will and his perfect will. God's permissive will is much larger and accounts for people's free will, their sin, the effects and consequences of sin, Satan and his influence. But all of these things operate in the confines of God's sovereignty and only what he allows can happen. He uses all that does happen ultimately for his glory and for the ultimate good of those who love him to help conform us to the image of Christ. God does not make choices for us or violate our free will. And that's a good reminder that that it's not my place to violate people's free will either. God wants us more than anything to have the choice to voluntarily love him or to reject him. And people need that choice in their relationships with me too. The price of our free will is very high for us and for God. We experience earthly and eternal consequences from our choices. But we can never fall outside of God's sovereignty and even Satan can never do anything outside of God's sovereignty. This is how in Christ his yoke is easy and his burden is light because he does the heavy lifting. He takes care of managing the universe and situations and circumstances and history. I just take care of myself and even then I trust him to work in and through me. So the first step on the path toward peace is I can step down off of the throne of my life and invite Jesus to reign as Lord over every single part of my life. This means total, humble, absolute surrender to Him, to His will and His control. I hold nothing back from Him. That is what it means for Him to be Lord. This feels pretty terrifying at first because I'm probably used to just trusting myself before, but as I taste and see that God is good, I begin to realize he is much better at being deity than I am. He is trustworthy, infinitely more trustworthy than I am. He is also the only one who is truly worthy of all of my faith, obedience, and submission. And I begin to realize that trusting him is wise and safe and trusting myself is actually a really dangerous place to be spiritually. But just a note, don't take my word for anything. Dig into the Bible for yourself. Discover the truth of God's word and how he wants to change you and heal you and transform you. 
build your life on Christ and the solid rock of his word alone. I'm going to include a link to a post on the same topic that has other links that might be helpful when you're starting this journey of giving up control to God. And so you can also find me at my blogs, peacefulwife.com and peacefulsinglegirl.com. And I hope you'll have a very peaceful day in Christ.